Welcome to the Franklin Control Systems VFD Startup Tutorial. Today, we're going to walk you through setup on our P-Series variable frequency drive for your basic supply fan application. Let's start with your wiring. If your VFD panel has a circuit breaker, wire into the three terminals clearly labeled L1, L2, and L3 on top of the breaker. If your panel is designed for single phase power, just wire into L1 and L2. If you have a line reactor with no disconnect, wire into terminals A1, B1, and C1 clearly labeled on top of the input line reactor. If you have no disconnect or line reactor, wire into terminals R, S, and T inside the drive itself. Most HVAC drive applications don't require an output filter, but if your application calls for one, tie your motor leads into terminals A2, B2, and C2 on top of the filter. If you don't have an output filter, tie your motor leads directly into terminals U, V, and W on the VFD. Wire the power and motor ground wires to a panel ground lug or stud clearly labeled with the ground symbol. Wire the 0 to 10 volt building automation signal to the VFD with the power wire going to the VFD V plus terminal, the signal wire to the V1, and shield to 5G for 7.5 to 40 horsepower VFDs, or CM, for 50 to 700 horsepower VFDs. If you're using a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, wire the signal wire into the I terminal. Check your power wiring and line voltage, and if everything is correct, power up the VFD. After a few seconds, your VFD will display the main screen with parameter DRV-00. Press the local remote key to switch to the local mode. Note that the letter L will appear next to the parameter number. Press the Enter key and use the up arrow once to change the frequency to 60 Hz, then press Enter to save this change. In order to check your motor rotation, press the forward key to run at 60 Hz. Check the rotation, and if it is not correct, power the VFD off and shut off power on the input by switching off the input breaker. Then, wait about 10 minutes to allow power to dissipate from the drive and swap any two motor leads. Then power up your VFD and press the local remote key and then forward key to verify. If the rotation is correct, press the stop key to stop your pump or fan. Now it's time to set up your drive. The new fast app firmware available on the P-Series VFD makes starting your fan a snap. It gives you the ability to select between supply fan, exhaust fan, cert pump, or any other HVAC application. After selecting your application, FastApp automatically optimizes critical drive parameters based on industry standards. We're going to go through general drive setup for a supply fan. Parameters not covered are preset and typically don't need changing. First, press the mode key until you arrive at set 00 app select and verify that the correct application is displayed. If not, press the Enter button. Using the up and down arrows, scroll to your application and press Enter to select this application. If you intend to control and monitor your P-Series VFD via a building automation system, select Basic Mode. Instructions can be found in your manual for how to program your VFD for desired operation based on wiring configuration. Now that you've selected your application, the following parameters will be preset and simply need to be verified. Use the up arrow to scroll to set 01. Set 01. The default input phase is set to three for three phase AC power distribution systems. Select one if you are doing a single to three phase conversion application. For proper VFD sizing for single to three phase conversion, consult Franklin Control Systems. Set 02. Motor horsepower should be set to the motor nameplate horsepower. 
verify that it matches the horsepower rating on the motor nameplate. If it does not match, press Enter key so the flashing cursor appears. Then use the up or down arrow key to adjust the value. Press Enter to save this change. Set 03. Motor FLA is defaulted to a UL table value based on the horsepower and voltage indicated by your part number. Verify that this matches the full load amps. If it does not match, press the Enter key so that the flashing cursor appears and use the Shift key to move the cursor to a specific digit. Then, use the up or down arrow key to adjust that digit as desired. Press Enter to save this change. Set 04. The motor synchronous RPM default is 1800 for most HVAC applications. Change this selection if your motor RPM is 3600 or 1200. Set 09. This parameter provides the VFD its run command. In most BMS systems, you will use remote 1 or the first terminal on the VFD. This is also the default for a supply or exhaust fan. In instances where no BMS is present and you will be doing manual or PID control, set 09 can be set to keypad 1. Set 10. This parameter is the speed control reference. The default for a supply or exhaust fan is I, referring to a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. If you're sending a 0 to 10 volt signal from your building automation system, change this parameter to V1. If you're not using a building automation signal, set this value to keypad 1. If this is the case, you may want to use PID mode to maintain a set point using the drive. The following parameters will explain how to set your drive for PID mode. If you don't intend on using PID mode, skip steps 20 through 25. Navigate down to set 20 PID mode and change it to yes. Set 21 PID FB will default to I for a 4 to 20 milliamp feedback signal. Change this to V1 to use a 0 to 10 volt signal from your transducer. Set 22, feedback unit. This is the unit of measurement for the sensor you're using. Pressure measured in inches of water column is the default for a fan application. If you're using a temperature sensor, change this value to degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius accordingly. If you're using a temperature signal, change set 31 out inverse to yes. Set 25. Navigate down to set 25 FB unit max. The default is one inch water column for a fan application. This value should match the maximum range of your pressure or your temp transducer. For example, if you have a zero to 122 degree Fahrenheit transducer, program a value of 122 degrees Fahrenheit. If a BACnet card is installed, the COM group should become enabled. Press the mode key until you arrive at the COM group. Then press the up arrow to navigate to the COM01 parameter and verify that it's set to BACnet. Connect your shielded communication cables to terminals P and N on your BACnet card. Set your baud rate in parameter IO91. To get there, press the mode key until you arrive at the IO group. Use the down arrow to get to IO91. COM02 should be set to none if you're using the BACnet card for monitoring only. If you'll be using BACnet to start and stop your VFD or to control the speed, choose command for command FREQ for speed control, or CMD and FREQ for both. Proceed to COM61 to set your MAC ID. You can set your device instance in COM63 and 64. The value of COM63 times 1000 plus COM64 is applied for a device instance. For example, if you set 123 in COM63 and 456 in COM64, 
your device instance will be 123456. This value must be unique in the system. Finally, write these values to your communication card by setting COM67 to yes. This will save your BACnet settings and change back to no when it has finished. Refer to your BACnet manual for writable input object instances. And that's it. Your P-Series VFD is set up and your fan is ready for use. If you have any questions, please call the factory at 800-962-3787. Thanks for watching.